less than a year after the worst mass shooting in Finnish peacetime history, when Pekka Erik Alvinen left eight Jokela high school students dead, the country was rocked by an even deadlier attack. It was a cool autumn morning in 2008, and the start of a new year at a college in the quiet town of Kawajoki in Western Finland. But it wouldn't stay quiet, because one of its students was about to walk in, shrouded in rage and armed with a semi-automatic pistol. You will die next. Hello and welcome to the Little Shop of Crime, curators and purveyors of all things macabre and mysterious. Today's case is the first spree shooting we've covered since the shop first opened, and I decided to do this one because it's received surprisingly little attention, overshadowed by the Jacella massacre the previous year, despite the fact this one proved even deadlier. But before we get into it, my name is Steve, and I offer true crime cases each week, usually solved, but occasionally mysterious, so if that sounds like your thing, please don't forget to subscribe. Okay, let's investigate. This is the Kawayoki School Shooting. Welcome to Finland. With its wintry forests, world-leading education system, astounding views of the northern lights and some of the cleanest air on the planet, it's no wonder the country regularly tops the UN's list of the happiest nations on Earth. And the Finns certainly know how to relax. Saunas are a way of life there, with two million of them serving a population of just five and a half million. To put that into perspective, if every single person in Finland decided to take a sauna at the same time, there'd be fewer than three people in each of them on average. Life in Finland is a far cry from the urban landscapes of much of the Western world. It's not hard to see why it earned its title the Land of a Thousand Lakes but in reality it actually has over 187,000 of them. And 74% of the Nordic landscape is forested. That's an area larger than the entire United Kingdom. And when they're not relaxing in the steam, Finnish families often embrace nature and enter the fauna-rich pine forests to hunt the abundant populations of reindeer and elk. And because hunting is a way of life for its people, gun ownership is very normal. In fact, with 1.6 million firearms in the country, 12% of the population owns at least one. But despite this, Finland remains one of the safest countries on Earth. It certainly isn't a country you would associate with gun violence or school shootings. But that's exactly what happened just 10 months before today's case, when Pekka Erik Alvinen killed eight innocent people at Jakala High School before turning the gun on himself. At this time, this was only the second school shooting in Finnish history, the previous one taking place back in 1989, which left two people dead in Rauma. The Jakela incident sparked fierce debates about gun laws in the country, but the government insisted there was no need for changes to their ownership laws, and even today you can buy a firearm at the age of just 15. They regarded the incident as a one-off, but the following September, devastation would rip through one of its high schools once more. Kawayoki is a relatively small town in western Finland, 180 miles north of its capital Helsinki, and with a population just shy of 13,000. Visitors enjoy its vast national parks and traditional Finnish dish of charred Baltic herring. And back in 2008, one of its residents was 22-year-old Mati Juhani Saari. Originally from North Ostrobothnia, Saria was a student at Sainayoki University, where he was enrolled on his second year of a hospitality management degree. It's almost a cliche, but Sari had a very troubled youth. His early childhood was plagued by frequent illness, health issues and slow growth. As a result, he became the target of severe bullying in secondary school, eventually dropping out due to the resulting anxiety, panic attacks and depression. Then, when he was 17, he was rocked by the sudden death of his brother, which had a further profound effect on his mental health. You're probably expecting me to tell you Sari was a loner, but he wasn't unpopular. Quite the opposite. He had a circle of very good friends. A former classmate, Susanna Karanen, said he was happy, a social guy, there was nothing exceptional, and he got along with people well, and he was not lonely. He had friends. But these friends could do little to quash the burning rage that was growing inside him. 
There were two sides to Sari. Academically, he was bright and a promising student. He was well liked by his teachers and classmates, but behind this mask was a deeply troubled individual with a growing obsession with guns and violence. By the time he began compulsory service in the Finnish army in 2006, Sari was described as weird and silent, and he had difficulties fitting in. He would go on to be expelled after just a month following an incident in which he opened fire in a woodland exercise against orders. After this, he began drinking heavily and was once arrested for driving under the influence. And he would begin to develop a disturbing fascination with well-known gun violence cases. In the weeks leading up to his own incident, Sari began posting on YouTube under the name Wumpscut86, where he listed his interests as horror movies, guns, sex, beer and computers. Amongst his account's favourite videos was footage of the Columbine High School massacre. He also began uploading worrying clips of himself firing a handgun at a local shooting range. You will die next. Naturally, alarm bells were raised about his channel, which just became a dumping ground for him to express his growing anger. It was littered with quotes displaying a hatred towards the human race, and due to its disturbing nature, an anonymous tip-off alerted police, and they paid him a visit the very day before the incident. They questioned him and searched his dormitory, but found no reason to arrest him, since he had no criminal record and held a permit for his weapon, which he had purchased a month before. And just hours after they left, he took these pictures. It was the morning of a new academic year at Sinayoki University, and around 200 students were inside the building. Around this time, Sari uploaded this photo to his social media account, which would be the last picture ever taken of him. At about 10.35, his class of 20 students were sitting an exam in a ground floor classroom. He'd been marked absent, but he was on his way. Sari entered the building via the basement, dressed all in black, including a black leather coat and ski mask, and he was carrying a large bag. He was also carrying his Walther P-22 semi-automatic pistol. At 10.40am he burst into the classroom and began firing indiscriminately at his fellow students. All hell broke loose, and the students ran screaming in all directions. But he walked up to them aggressively, executing each of them one by one. Some students attempted to hide underneath their desks, but he just ducked and shot them too. Three students were lucky enough to run out of the classroom almost immediately, and they would later go on to say that Sari appeared to be relishing the situation. One student in an adjacent classroom, Sana Opana, said this. Students who survived the attack are looking for answers themselves. <laughs> this 17 year old says she was in the next classroom when the incident began at this vocational college. She says she first thought they were hearing a toy gun until a couple of them went to have a look. That's when they saw what was happening. She says after that, they hid under and behind tables until the shooting stopped and they could run away. Two students from Opana's classroom went to investigate the noise and Sari shot at them, but they managed to escape running up some nearby stairs. Emergency services received their first call at 10.46 when Sari stopped firing and entered the hallway to reload his weapon. According to witnesses, the teacher then attempted to prevent him from re-entering the classroom, but Sari tragically shot and killed him. He then threw a homemade petrol bomb into the classroom, which engulfed it in flames immediately. Minutes later, he ran down the corridor, throwing another petrol bomb into a language laboratory. He then shot out all of the windows in the school's main atrium. 
Here, Sari encountered the school's caretaker, Jukka Forsberg. He began firing at Forsberg, who ran, ducking and weaving to avoid the shots. Luckily, he managed to escape unscathed, and he later described how evident it was that Sari was well prepared and he walked calmly. 20 minutes after the shootings began, a police van with two officers arrived at the scene. But Sari was waiting for them, and he opened fire from the building's entrance, forcing them to retreat and radio for backup. Meanwhile, most of the students had managed to escape the building through various entrances and doors, but some had exited through the rear of the building and found themselves trapped by the adjoining Kiranyoki River. Some hid whilst others used rowboats as a means of escape. 45 minutes later, more armed police officers arrived, bolstered by a number of specialist armoured vehicles. They made an attempt to enter the building through the main corridor, but by now the fire was burning aggressively, and thick black smoke had begun pouring from the entrance, preventing the operation. At 11.53, Sari made a phone call to his closest friend, Rauno. Apparently, Sari was very calm, and he confessed to having perpetrated the attack, which was by now the focus of every news station in Finland, and he told his friend that he just wanted to say goodbye. Soon after this call was made, firefighters managed to extinguish the flames and armed officers stormed the building. And at 12.13pm, about an hour and a half after he'd launched the pernicious attack, they found Mati Yuhani Sari in a corridor. He was still alive, but only just. He'd shot himself in the head. Medics took Sari to Tampere University Hospital to be treated for the head wound, but he died a few hours later at 4.46pm. Sari fired nearly 200 bullets and killed 10 people during his attack, plus himself. Nine of the victims died in the classroom. One managed to escape the blaze but sadly succumbed to a gunshot wound in the corridor shortly afterwards. A number of the victims' bodies were so badly damaged by the fire that they could only be identified through medical and dental records. Here are the 10 victims of the Kawayoki school shooting. In total, Sari murdered eight female students and one male student, along with their teacher, who died heroically trying to prevent further tragedy. All of the students were in their 20s, and the teacher was 51 years old. Another 21-year-old woman was found in a corridor some distance from the classroom with a severe head injury. Initially, it was thought that she had injured herself jumping through a window to escape, but it was later found that Sari had actually shot her in the head. Over the next two days, she had two life-saving operations, and she went on to make a full recovery. A further ten students were treated for minor injuries, including sprains and cuts from broken glass. All of the student victims were classmates of Sari's. Finland was understandably left in a state of shock following the massacre, which was the deadliest peacetime attack in Finnish history and the deadliest attack on any school campus since April 2007 when Seung Hui Cho killed 21 people during the Virginia Tech shooting. On the day of the incident, a crisis meeting was held, with then Prime Minister Matti Van Hanen describing it as a tragic day, appealing for unity in the hope that events like these will not happen again. A national day of mourning was declared for the following day, during which time Van Hanen travelled to Kawayoki to meet with students. It was later revealed that the only male student victim was in fact a close friend of Sari's. Finnish investigators wanted answers as to why somebody would carry out such a heinous attack on innocent people. They searched Sari's dormitory where they found piles of empty boxes that had contained bullets for his handgun, as well as two handwritten notes, which indicated that he'd actually been planning the massacre for about six years. The notes were filled with rage and hatred, and Sari wrote, I hate the human race, I hate mankind, I hate the whole world, and I want to kill as many people as possible. And in the following days, investigators received a sizable number of tip-offs, alerting them to many of Sari's previous posts online, including suspicious photographs, videos, and comments he'd made in chat rooms. Like with so many incidents like this, the warning signs had been there all along. Although almost all of the victims were female, police were satisfied that the motive did not appear to be driven by a hatred of women specifically. In fact, close friends divulged that Sari had in fact opted for a catering course in order to be surrounded by female students. 
Another friend informed investigators that 18 months earlier, Sari had actually sent him a message saying he was going to carry out a school shooting the following day. At the time, Sari denied being serious about the message, but it just shows that the desire for annihilation was in him long before he acted upon it. Finnish police also looked into whether there was a copycat element to the case, after it emerged that both Sari and Pekka Erik Alvenen had bought their firearms from the same firing range. As well as this, Sari uploaded a number of photographs in similar poses to Alvinen, and both exchanged videos related to numerous school shootings in the same groups on Finnish social networking site IRC Galleria. Although there was no evident connection between the two cases, it's clear that Sari was inspired and influenced by the Jakela shooting, as the two incidents were very similar. And according to those who knew him, Sari had gradually begun dressing and behaving similarly to Alvinen during the period between the two attacks. Six months after the attack, police ruled out that he'd had any actual contact with Alvinen though, and they concluded that he planned the atrocity alone. 200 people were interviewed during this time, none of whom said they knew Sari was ever serious about carrying out such an attack. And although they did see clips of Sari at the firing range, police denied having prior knowledge of the You Will Die Next video. According to them, Sari would have been detained for further questioning had it been brought to their attention. Investigators believe that the videos were shot by someone else, with the chief inspector speculating that the cameraman may have been the friend that Sari murdered in the attack. Police Commissioner Mikko Patero insisted that police would strengthen their monitoring of YouTube and social networking sites in order to prevent such a case occurring again in the country. And due to their failure to prevent the tragedy, despite questioning him less than 24 hours before the incident, the Finnish police themselves were put under investigation, whilst the officer who questioned him was suspended in 2009. Although this case isn't as well known as other similar crimes, I'm sure some of its characteristics sound all too familiar. Like so many other incidents, the bright red flags had been there all along. If the warning signs had been heeded, particularly when the perpetrator had left so many clues about his intentions, it no doubt could have been prevented altogether. I know that's easy to say after the fact, and it has been 14 years since, without a massacre of this magnitude happening on Finnish soil. Thanks so much for spending your time watching this video, I really appreciate it. If you found this case interesting, please take a second to hit that like button for me. And as usual, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss next week's case. Bye.